and saying welcome to the first webinar of the MOOC on Systemic Approach to Competence Development in Youth Work, which is organized by Salto Training Cooperation Resource Center, supported by the German and Latvian national agencies of Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps. This course is being brought by a team of few people, and at first I will invite them to introduce themselves then later we're going to ask you a little bit more. So we're going to have a brief survey to know who is connecting here and where are you from and what do you do and what do you do in the course right now. And then you will have chance also to chat with other participants in smaller groups. And afterwards there will be a possibility to go a little bit deeper in the content, in the main topic of the course linked to understanding systems, understanding systemic view and systemic approach to your competence development. And then towards the end of the webinar, we're going to take a look one more time at the online course, what we have already, what is upcoming in the next modules in the upcoming weeks. So yeah, right now I would invite Nezna to introduce yourself briefly. Hi, hello, my name is Nežana. I'm one of the facilitators in the course. I'm logging in from Novi Sad in Serbia from my balcony office full of orchids. It's very nice to see you all. And maybe just briefly to introduce, I'm, as I said, one of the facilitators. I generally work as a facilitator trainer and for the past few years have been involved in Yokomo. Uh, and it's very nice to be bringing Yokomo Systemic uh, online and to have you all with us in this learning process. And maybe I then invite Darko to do the same. Hello, greetings from my side too. I come back a little bit later about this peacock tail in behind me. We will deal a little bit without it, with, uh, with this peacock tail during the webinar. I must say I'm still impressed with the number of people who joined the webinar and I was looking at a chat and number of places and cities and towns and villages where you're coming from is really impressive. So welcome you all, not just you personally, but also what you bring from where you're coming from to this webinar. I hope you will enjoy it. Okay, and I see also Giselle from Salto Training Cooperation, who is one of the organizers and also behind the European training strategy and many other things happening in Europe. So a word for you as well. Thank you. I was make a long, uh, a long introduction, a welcome. I just, like all of you, I was curious also about this seminar and, and to see yeah, how are things going in the course. I work indeed for Salto Training and Cooperation, who is one of the organizers of, of the whole Yokomo project, which started a few years ago and continues to develop super excitingly. So I'm really happy to be here also. Thanks. And I will introduce myself shortly, so I'm part of the facilitators team. I work as a trainer and facilitator in the field of youth work mainly. Recently also facilitating a lot of online learning happening around Europe. So online courses and webinars, online meetings and so on. Yeah, happy to be a part of this team and part of this course. What do we have? So we have one third of all this group being a student, then we have nine people here who are youth workers, seven project managers, seven trainers, six teachers, four researchers, welcome to you, and then 10 people said they, none of these options and they belong to some group. Thank you, Limonis. So just also to prove that we are actually reading your registrations and what you offer in terms of the expectations of the questions and so on. We will not go through them individually, but what we did is kind of summarize it. And now we wanted to, at the beginning of the webinar, actually tell you what can you expect in this webinar and what not. Yeah, not because we don't want to offer you uh, what kind of all the things that you asked for, but simply because we have limited time and also our course is limited in its focus. Yeah. So maybe I start with what we will not offer in the webinar, but also not in the course, which is general youth work. 
So although Yokomo deals with international youth work and competences related to it, the course itself is not about how to be a youth worker, how to work with young people, and then also not about how to do with volunteering, how to work with volunteers, organizations, and so on. Yeah, uh, Maybe there will be segments there that you could link to these expectations, but the course is not about that. So maybe also it's important to, to highlight these things. Another thing is that this course and the webinar are not about digital uh, youth work or online learning, yeah? how to do things online or how to do things in the digital context. The course itself is online. It's a MOOC, but also maybe it's important to say that this course was planned to be online for over a year. Yeah. So even before uh, COVID times. So this is not an ad hoc solution as something where we practice our digital skills, but it's meant to be because we wanted to lead, reach large audiences. But if you would like to learn about digital youth work and online learning, the course will not offer it apart from some practice online. But the good news is there is a MOOC, Digital Youth Work. Livonus is one of the facilitators. And I've heard the rumors that the enrollment will start for the course very soon. Yeah. So stay tuned. And maybe we also announce it in our, in our course. So for the people who are interested, can check that. Yeah. And then there were some specific questions. For example, one that I highlighted, ETS competence model in your context, which is excellent, which means that you are in module, uh, actually kind of module four is coming. But just to know these individual things we will not tackle in the webinar, they're part of the different modules. Here we basically, as Lyman has said, would like to see where we are, how you are in the course, and, and to pick up some of the insights, which leads me to what this webinar is about. So maybe just to actually repeat what Lyman has already said. One thing that we wanted to do is also to help in building the community. We know that one thing is when you're sitting alone and going through different forums and videos, and another thing is when you see the faces, yeah, and when you hear the voices, when you're able to share. So this is really one of the main reasons why we offer the webinar. So we can also see you, you see us, and you see the others. So it's about sharing, it's about exchanging experience. It's also to see where you are at the moment, not just with a poll, but we will give you a chance for you to share uh, what are the most important highlights for you so far, and also to see what comes next. So to be the bridge between between different uh, parts of the context, content, sorry. We will, not go in, we will not go in depth to say, oh, let's now repeat and debrief activities and talk about systemic or systemic approach to youth work, but we will uh, offer additional inputs and also an additional ex exercise. So for those people who were interested to see systemic methods, uh, you will have a little chance and another hint we throw about the peacock tail behind, behind Darko, yeah? So this will also uh, happen here. So we will be deepening some of the aspects, but then uh, most of the content will still come on canvas so maybe this is what i will wrap up this uh, little overview with is that this webinar is not a lecture so it's not one hour we will tell you more about it so it will be some bits and pieces but most of the content still will be on our canvas uh, platform so hopefully it did help us to understand what this uh, webinar is uh, all about for the ones who've been in the module one and module two uh, module three this course is very much about exploring the the systems and systemic view and systemic, also systemic belonging. We focus mostly on youth work later, but in the beginning, the first modules are very much about getting to know what systems are, how systems work. And after reading some discussion forums, and we also thought maybe we need to go a little bit deeper, deeper in this topic. And in order to do that, uh, this metaphor of a peacock tail, or the tail behind me. There's a peacock and it has this big tail behind me. Could be actually a nice way to see the different systems that we belong to at the same time. And each of these systems can be seen as part of the peacock tail. So you have one part of the peacock tail could be one of the systems, second is another one. So the third, the fourth, the fifth. So we, at the same time, we belong to many different systems. And the reason why we wanted to do this is also to get a sense of, it's not just about being outside of these systems and observing them, that we also ask you to do uh, deliberately. For example, in the module three, where we look at the system, systemic view, in a way we ask you to look, uh, to take a look outside and to see what's happening there. But the interesting thing is that you are also part of these systems. So you're not somebody just looking at them from the outside, but you're also part, you also belong to these different systems. So we're going to do one little exercise just to feel and sense how it feels to belong to these different systems. And we do it first individually. And after that, we will share in small groups. 
So I will guide you a little bit through the exercise, but in order to do that, each of you, you need to get one piece of uh, paper. So maybe, yeah, one piece of paper, either from your notebook or just a piece of paper. On your piece of paper, I ask you first to draw something like yourself. Yeah. And then behind you, you can draw a couple of feathers in a peacock tail. I think we're not going to explore now all different systems that you belong to, but at least three of them. So if you write, uh, draw a peacock tail behind you, try to draw at least three. Yeah, it could be more, it could be four, it could be five, it could be six. But for the moment, I think for this exercise, we need at least three feathers uh, in your peacock tail. So you relax a bit in where you're sitting or where you're standing and you just need your piece of paper be in front of you and just sense and imagine just behind your back, all these different systems that you belong to. And we'll try to map them, to visualize them a little bit more clearly, yeah? So you can start somewhere maybe behind your right shoulder with one of the feather there. You can sense it as, as a family system of yours. So you can see behind you in this part of the peacock tail, you can see your brothers and sisters, if you have them, your parents, and then behind them also maybe your grandparents and the parents of your grandparents and the grand grandparents and several generations behind. Yeah. And by doing that, you just sense how it feels to be part of this line that was there before you and standing just behind your back at the moment. Some of them are alive, some of them are not alive but just sense how it feels to be connected to your family system. Feel this energy and what you get from there and feel the resources that you get from your family system. There's a, maybe a message passed on you and just feel how it feels to be part of this family line. Yeah, so whatever comes to you from this system, you can write in the first feather of your peacock tail on the piece of paper. Yeah. So next to it, somewhere maybe behind your head, so maybe if you, this is the middle one, it is your professional system that you belong to. Yeah. If you are a youth worker, you sense maybe first behind you young people that you work with or you work for. Yeah. And maybe behind them, maybe your colleagues, your co-youth workers, people from your organization, people from your club, maybe some others who are there, maybe some other organizations, everybody who belongs to your youth worker system. If you're a student, you can also see maybe your colleagues in your studies, the professors, other institutions related to your university, maybe where this field of practice is coming from. So what's the origin? What are the roots of what you're studying from? So sense how it feels to be connected to this professional system of yours. Yeah. Where do you connect more? Where do you connect less? How is the energy in this professional system? What do you take as a resource from this system? And feel it. And then next to that one, somewhere next to your left shoulder, so somewhere behind here, is a system of place where you live. Yeah? So you can sense maybe your first neighbors behind you, maybe people from your municipality, from the area where you live, from your village, from your town, maybe the institutions that are there, maybe schools, maybe sports clubs, political parties, whoever is there in this part. And maybe then bigger, maybe this is part of the bigger system like your region or country and sense how it feels to be part of it. What do you get from there? 
did you get a special task, maybe, through the generations behind you? What resources do you get from there? Now, sense all together, like all these three big systems behind you, like the full peacock tail, your family system, your professional system, and the system from the place where you live, how it feels to be part of all these systems, where do you feel more connected, where do you feel less connected, what do they bring to you? And perhaps is there anything you would like to say to each of these individual systems you can turn, you can turn physically or you can turn in your mind and just tell them what you need to tell them. Perhaps maybe you need to thank them, perhaps maybe you need to say something else. And just harvest and take from this sense of belonging what you need to take, what you carry with you as part of these systems. So we give you maybe a minute or two just to write down things that you felt are important or taken how it feels to be part of these different systems at the same time. And then we will split you into groups, but maybe two minutes just to write down what you take from these belongings. Okay, so once who have come around, you can wave to me and tell me, okay, we are done. We have written down things. Okay, I see Viola. Thank you, Maria, Marcella, Maris. Thank you. You will be split into groups, small groups, like groups of four, I think maximum five people. Yeah, and you are not going to have a lot of time. But we'll ask you to present briefly what you discovered about these belongings and what you discovered about the systems behind in your peacock tail, yeah? So in the exercise, in the little groups, and maybe you can see my, my screen, if you put it on a speaker view, you can see the flip chart better. So there will be one person talking. Huh? So one person talking about uh, the peacock tail. And then you have in the group of three, this would be like that you have one person presenting what I've discovered, and then you have another two persons. One is listening to the content of the story. How did I hear you? What did I hear you saying about what you discovered? Yeah? So this would be really hearing the content. Yeah? Listening, focused. What, what I hear you saying. So what I hear you saying. Another person will be listening with a different kind of ears. So you don't listen with ears of content. You look, you listen with the ears of systemic. So which means that maybe you don't need to listen only with your ears, but you listen really with your, with your whole body in a way. So you're almost like a big ear, yeah? Like a big receiver, yeah? And then you have to do nothing special. You just be a big receiver. But what are you listening to is not only the content. You're listening what systems are speaking through at the moment. Yeah? Because it might be that sometimes we speak as individuals, as Darko speaking now. But very often through Darko, my systems are speaking through me. Yeah? So the other person is listening to what systems, yeah. If you have a group of five, it could be two persons listening to the content and let's say two other persons listening to the systems. And just to have a little sense of how different messages could be heard. Maybe one remark, I don't know if you had opportunity to be in the both listening roles in listening possibilities, because what we wanted actually to grow a little bit more awareness in you, especially while doing the exercises in the module three. And if you remember, we also in the module two and module three, actually. Yeah. So we'll ask you to observe the system, to listen to the systems with more kind of systemic ears. So if the one listening to the content is more moving towards the speaker, so the movement is a little bit like this. So you move a little bit towards the speaker. Your focus of your intention is what the speaker is talking to the content, to the words, what you hear, 
perhaps maybe even emotions to some extent, but more in trying to understand it. Because this effort, I try to understand you. I make an effort to understand you. While the other one is almost effortless. You withdraw a bit. So basically, the, it's more like being exposed to, being let, be, let the system speak to you. So it's a little bit more like direction is different. So it's more comes to you. So in the modules, you will understand that we ask this kind of questions when you look at the crossroad, for example, or when you will look at your own youth work system in the module three, when you do the exercise with cups, we will ask you, what's the big story that wants to be told here? So what the system wants to tell you? So how do you understand? How do you understand the message? What, what patterns do you see? But let the system talk to you rather than trying to understand it from your analytical mind. So in these exercises, I think a reminder of these two different kinds of listening might be helpful. So instead of making an effort and trying to understand it hard and break it into parts, try to really be more in a kind of back seat and let the information come to you. So there was a little, I don't know if it makes sense to you, but it was a little, yeah, we wanted to have this little clarification about what it means to have this kind of systemic views. So it's not only about big picture and zooming out that we will we'll ask you all the time to zoom out. So it is zooming out and at the same time also letting the information come to you. So letting the understanding of the system come to you. So make less efforts than you normally do when you want to learn something hard or make an effort. And maybe one more thing to that, when you do the exercise with cups, an exercise with cups will ask you to map your own youth work system. In case you're not youth worker and you're in the course, you can also do it to map your own, let's say, professional system. For example, where are you in relation to all the other key actors in the field or other key concepts in the field? So it doesn't have to be only people or groups. It can also be the key concepts like, I don't know, non-formal education or your professional field of study if you're a student. And in this exercise, we also ask you then after mapping to, to zoom out and to look at the whole system. So we ask you to see, okay, what system wants to tell you there and one thing we ask you to look at the patterns. So what kind of patterns in relationships you can see there? And to understand the patterns, maybe it's really a, a longer webinar that we, we could do. But maybe some things maybe that you can ask yourself, maybe the one question that you can ask yourself uh, is, if this is your system, whatever your youth work system or your professional system, and as we said in one of the videos before, every system is part of the bigger system. So every system is part of the greater system and, and the boundaries of your system, no matter how hard they are, they always, they always let the influence from the bigger system, uh, bigger system inside. So one question that you can ask, for example, if you recognize there is a particular pattern here in your system, yeah, you may also wonder is it something that belongs to the bigger system? So maybe there is a something from the bigger system that is just replicating, influencing the way your system works. That could be one thing. It doesn't have to be that, but it could also be that. So you, maybe you need to zoom out more, not only on your system, but you can maybe zoom out bigger on your community, on your context, on a bigger context, and maybe wonder, oh, is this pattern that maybe is coming from somewhere else? maybe from a greater system, yeah? Maybe from the past. Maybe we brought it from the past, from the beginning of our system. So when youth work system was formed, and maybe back then, in these moments when this youth work system was formed, maybe this pattern made a lot of sense, but perhaps maybe it doesn't have sense anymore. So one thing about patterns so is to look maybe where this pattern is coming from, but the other question is, you can also ask about patterns. What was it originally when it was made? What was it a good solution for? What was it a good solution for? And we can speak about something that you experience as a positive pattern, but something maybe as difficult, as a difficult pattern, something that you want to change. And maybe in the moments 
when this pattern was created, it had a good reason to exist. It served to the system. It brought it somewhere, but maybe it doesn't serve it anymore. So that could be a starting point for realization. Yes, perhaps maybe this pattern brought us here, but in order to move on, we need to outgrow the current pattern. But the step one is the awareness of that. So the question that you can ask is, what was this a good solution for? What this pattern served us, uh, served this youth work system so far so well, but perhaps maybe we need to outgrow it at the moment. So this would be maybe two little additions to looking at your systems. So where is this pattern coming from? Is it coming from the wider, larger system or what was it originally serving for, serving to? The, the, the system speaks in the language of patterns and it's a little bit like a subtle language. So the system doesn't say to you, I need this, I need that. It doesn't scream at your face. So the system creates a pattern to have a subtle message. And whatever the pattern is, it had a certain purpose for the system in the moment it was created. Yeah? And when we sense that it is pattern, the current pattern is blocking the development and the system wants to move on, but the pattern is blocking the development. Maybe human reaction would be to say, yes, let's break the pattern and let's make the other one. But apparently, the th with the, what we know about systems so far, that this breaking the pattern doesn't happen that way. So the first thing is this awareness, recognizing this original purpose of the pattern. So what was the pattern original purpose? What did it serve to? And by recognizing that, we only by doing that, we already reduce the impact of that pattern on the field. So what we can do, basically, we can say that, okay, this pattern served us so well so far, and it brought this and that to us and to the system that we belong to. And in order to move on, we need to rethink, recreate another constellation, another pattern that will actually allow the whole system to do what it is meant for. So in a way, in the moment when you're trying to outgrow and we're outgrowing already the pattern, in a way you partner with the original purpose of the whole, and of the whole system and the destination, why it is made for. So in order to reach this purpose, to reach this destination, we need to outgrow it. But in order to outgrow it, we need first to acknowledge its purpose and put it in the right place so we can create another one. Some people will say that in, when you put it in the right place, meaning that it also kind of makes a compost, kind of it creates a compost. So it creates a kind of fertile ground for the new patterns to be, to be developed with CAPS. And uh, when you do that exercise, be mindful. That would be very useful if somebody can help you do that. In the video, we presented it as a, something that you can do it on your own. Uh, it is possible, but it's much, much easier if you have at least one person that actually helps you a little bit hold space and a little bit facilitate this exercise for you. So you can do mutually, like I do it for you, you do it for me. That would be even the best uh, uh, possible way to do that. So we wish you fruitful systemic learning further in the course. All right. Thanks a lot, Darko, for this additional input. And there, are, there is a lot of content already on our online platform. And this is what I would like to show you uh, a bit what is already there and what can you expect in the upcoming weeks. And people were also asking, so how exactly do I join? What activities are there? And I understand that for some of you, online learning can be a new thing or that particular platform can be a new thing and might be using something different in your university. Or, or your workplace. Uh, so I'll just go now and show the course, how it looks like. First of all, this is the link that you need to save it and have it. That's the direct link to the course. And I'm just posting it in the chat. It will always lead you to the right place. It may ask you to log in, and then do you log in with your Canvas login that you created already? You are all enrolled because you are in this webinar. Otherwise, you wouldn't receive the invitation. So let's take a look. Okay. So 
if you paste the link, you should arrive to a place called home. If by some reason you see something else, you always go to the left side menu, click dashboard. Uh, well, you see many courses <laughs> that I'm involved into, but then you should look for the one with this blue cover image and it will lead you to a home page. So that's how you get to the course. So the menu on the very left side is the main navigation way, how you orientate in all the Canvas environment. In the account, you can build, you can edit your profile, you can add picture, and then in dashboard, you see all the courses, yeah? So once you are in the course, there is another menu here on the left side. And there you can see modules. So if you click on modules, it will open you that kind of view. Maybe it's slightly different for you, but you will see it right there. Actually, I can even put like a learn a view. So it will appear like that. So here is our first module. You can always like make it smaller, just the main part or extend, expand it. And here we have essential information about the course. In the course overview, you see what we have to offer, what are the modules, and what are the opening dates of each module. Yeah, and because you registered it to the webinar, most probably you did it through here, so you know it already. We really advise to go through the first module because it has all the basics. How to orientate on Canvas, what credentials are you going to get, how open badges work, how youth pass will be issued and when. So all the information is here or what qualities are necessary. And while I'm talking also, you can send questions in the chat and my colleagues can respond to your questions. So the module two is already a lot about the content. So you will see, for example, animated video, what do we mean by systems? You will see some examples of system in action. Perhaps you remember that video, those who were already completed the module two, you remember that video from a street in India. Maybe some of you recognize similar view in your location where you live. Maybe for some of you it's totally different. And then the module three is something we opened uh, this week. And please note that in order to unlock module three, you need to finish first two modules. So in my case, you see green check mark. So that's how you see the progress. If it's green, it means you completed that activity and you move on. So for third module, you need to complete the first two. And now you don't see any other modules because they yet are not opened. There is also an extra navigation for you that you can check discussions directly. So you see there is ask for help forum. You can see insights about system in action or your reflection on systems. And if you are, let's say, a new learner, you just joined the course, you will see that you read none of the discussion forums, right? So the dark blue shows how many there are unread replies. And then if you go to badges, for example, in the badges part, you should be able to see how many badges have you got. And this will allow you to share badges and uh, you will see what other badges can you get. So what is upcoming? Perhaps I will go to home page because that's where we describe everything. And you can see the latest announcements on the top. So we do have a few more modules to be opened. So from next Monday, we are opening a module on European Training Strategy Competence Model for Youth Workers and how to approach that competence model in the youth work system. And also then we have new module opening on systemic approach to competence development. And then the next one will be more, how do you use what you learn back in your practice? Yeah. And then there will be the last uh, module opening at the same time. And the last one is about evaluation, giving feedback and claiming youth pass certificate. So you will be able to check mark which modules did you do, did you complete, and uh, then you will provide data which we need to generate a youth pass for you. So 
these are the dates. Also, there is a very handy thing, calendar. And in the calendar, you can always see what's going on. So, for example, you can see that January 15, we got these kind of things opening up, yeah? Module 1 and 2, introduce yourself, discussion forms. Then we are right here, 27th of January, we have a live webinar. And you see all these dates. And if you go up there, you can look for February. And then in February, you will see clearly what is ha what module is opening on 1st of February, 8th of February, 15th. And the last day of the course is 22nd of February. And you can already see in the calendar that on 17th of February, we're going to have second webinar. And second webinar is already part about uh, transfer of learning to your practice. So we will invite a few people who already learned about a uh, systemic approach to competence development in the past. So they will share their insights, how they use what they learn in their practice, how did it work, and there will be sp space for you to reflect. What did you take from the course? How was it for you? And some possible ways how you're going to move on with what you learned. So that's what's waiting for you in the upcoming weeks. And important thing, if you are uh, a bit lost or you don't have uh, all answers to your questions, you can always head to discussion and we have pinned discussion called Ask for Help. So you can write down your question right here or you can go to inbox, click new and then uh, choose whom do you want to write and then write us a message through Canvas, and we would prefer that we would communicate through Canvas conversations. So, for now, we're saying thank you very much, and we see you online, and follow the news about the upcoming webinar. On 17th of February, you can already mark it in your calendar. We launch the link to register very soon.